Hi guys, my name is Henry and this is Untold Stories. Um, I have got my good friend in to talk about the birth of his child. It's Harry Pinero for Parenthood. I remember the lady was like to us, um, would you like to know the sex? And I was like, I just held a hand, I was like, yeah, go on, tell me. My name's Harry Pinero, I'm 29 and I'm gonna be speaking about being a first time father. It's crazy because, yeah, growing up, I think the idea of having a, a son was always like what I wanted because I never had a little brother. And I wanted someone who I could like teach how to be a man from how my, my father did. Um, I'm the one that says, yo, that's that contraception now. Okay, we don't need that. Let's have a baby because I felt like this is the person that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. So when I got a call to say she's pregnant, yeah, it's like you can, I've said this before, you can plan for everything in your life. But when it's real and, it's the, and it's, there's no hiding from it, it's very, very scary. I remember like we were standing in the, in the hallway to about to leave and she didn't want to leave, innit? Because she was just like, she was trying to do so many different things. I was like, you can't run away. This baby's coming. Like, what, what are you going to do? And I remember when we left and got to the hospital, the hospital was just like empty. There was just literally no one in the hospital. This is when stuff started getting real. Because in order for her to get contractions, they had to put something in her. And when they did that, yeah, like my hand is still numb from it because she's, she was squeezing my hand with pain because it was excruciating. They needed to get the contractions. And I think seeing that probably made me like the most like scared I've ever been in my life because it was like, you can't do nothing. Like you're actually helpless. And the only thing you can do is say, Pele, like rub her head and say, oh, I'm so, sorry, babe. Like, can I get you anything? Um, so when she got to like um, the 10 centimetres dilated, yeah, um, and that's when the nurse said, yeah, we can see the head, yeah. It's like everything that everyone ever, ever told me, my dad, my mum, everything came down to that moment, innit? And it was like, ah, I'm actually going to be a father, like, this is mad. And um, I remember, like, she done a mad push, like, the most strongest push I've ever seen in my life, yo. And I saw this little boy's head, like, I just saw bare hair coming out, and I was like, look, he's got my hair. <laughs> Carol joke. But yeah, um... The umbilical cord, guys, when you see it in movies, it looks like it's a little satin like that. But that, that stuff is really hard to cut. So I was just nibbling through and I was like, cool, we've, we've done it. And then um, I'm Muslim, obviously. So um, my dad wasn't there. And usually your dad would be the one that would sing the Adan. Um, the baby was crying in it. And the midwife handed him to me. And I sang the Adan in his ear and he stopped. He literally stopped crying. And I said, my God, you're real. You get me? So I backed off my top and obviously because I'm mad whammon now, I was like to the lady, listen, <laughs> don't get excited here, you know what I mean? But anyway, so I put my son on my chest, yeah, and I felt like that was real love. Like, that's love there because this is unconditional. Like, no matter what happens in life, I'm always going to love you. Um, obviously, unfortunately, because of COVID, obviously, we wasn't able to, um, I wasn't able to go to the next room, um, postnatal ward, didn't it? So I had to go home, innit? And I wasn't with them for like two days. And all I kept saying to her was FaceTime me, FaceTime me, or send me pictures, send me something, innit? So then when I finally grabbed him, yeah, from the um, hospital, yeah, like, I don't know, it was just mad. I, just, I was walking with him and I was just like, my, my life changed right now. Like, I put him in a car. I don't think I've driven at 15 miles per hour ever in my life. Then we got him home, did his vomit on me, and I was like, you've arrived. Like, you've actually arrived, you vomited on me. And, and it's mad because, you, you know when you think of vomit, like you think, ugh, if anyone vomits on me, bro, my son would be vomiting on me, I'll just be like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, so like, that feeling, I think the first two weeks, yeah, um, I was so spaced out. Like, I didn't know how, I didn't, I didn't cry during the pregnancy, during that when my, my son was born. I didn't do no emotional stuff that people do. Because I didn't understand what was going on. Like, it was too much going on. I, th I don't know if it's because of COVID. I, I, I actually do think it's because of COVID. I think COVID really messed up my head a bit. And um, having a baby was just like, oh, wow, another boom bam on me, innit? Yeah, it was just very, very difficult because uh, it's like, I'm very happy, but I don't know how to, to show these emotions. And I, I don't know if my missus at the time thought, well, is this guy even happy that he's having a kid? It's just that I didn't know how to compute it. But... It's like, when I used to, I would pick him up here and he'd cry and then go to his mum and I'd think, wow, <laughs> this guy really doesn't like me because I'm just like, bro, like you're, I'm here, I made you. Yeah, come on, give me a hug. And um, I realised that obviously he, the nurturer is his mum in it, so she's obviously going to have 
that, that care for him, innit? But then it's like, when he started, I think after the first month, he started to open his eyes more and he would look at me and do a little smile. And I don't think anybody understands, when your kid smiles at you for the first time, yeah, it's, it's like, it's just unreal, innit? It's, it's the next level when I just felt so accomplished as a dad. I was just like, yeah, like, get me. I would roll with my bag, you know, with the, I look like, what's that film, Pacifier? I felt like I was the, the, the black pacifier. The pain that, that my missus went through, I don't think I could have physically been able to handle it. But what's very hard as a man is that like, no one really asks you how you feel. And I felt that a lot during like the big, like that month or two when I was like spaced out. It's more about, rightly so of course, the, the, the mother in it and looking after the baby. But man's just gone through having a kid in COVID. Like, where's my hello? <laughs> like, how are you doing in it? And I think when everyone started to realize it, yeah, I got more emotional and, and started to like realize, oh my days, I'm a dad. Oh, that's my son. Like, and I, then I think I cried, but no one, no one knew I cried, didn't it? Like, I just, I just said it. I was just like, fam, like, man's mad emotional. Like, I was looking after him. No one's in the house, and I just like bawling. I was just like, Phew. you're actually my son. Like, it's, it's one of those feelings where like every other day, random day, I might just get a weird feeling that, wow, I'm a dad, didn't it? Thank you so much for watching this episode of Untold Stories. If you have missed any episode, make sure you go back and watch and make sure you subscribe as well for the episodes that are to come.